What's up, you board game playing, articulate, perfect American English speaking rock stars? In fact, if your American accent is not perfect, that is okay. That's why we're here to have some fun with the phonemic chart for American English. Remember, American English is quite, quite different from British English or Australian English. This is from www. MacMillanEnglish.com. Go there, give credit to them, Michael. I just did, thank you. And check them out. This is great. This is interact. So you could just check this out on your own. But if you want to see a video with me breaking them all down, talking a tiny bit about them, let's jump right in to it. A lot of these I go into greater detail in their own video, like I and O, many of the vowels, etc. Perhaps all of them by this point that you're watching this. But let's just quickly look at all of the sounds that you can hear in American English. Now, it's important to note that there is an international phonetic alphabet, IPA, and what this means is that it is a true, complete, specific alphabet so that every single sound that you can hear when you're making a phenome or word is represented. Whereas in English, as I always mention, every single letter, most letters at least, can make several different sounds. Recently you might have seen that the O, the letter O, can make a number of different sounds from a uh in none, to O oh in no, to ow in cow with the help of a W. So there are all sorts of different ways letters can be used. So the letter can only give you a hint about what it might sound like, but it can't tell you exactly. This international phonetic alphabet was designed so that you can find out exactly how a word is pronounced audibly, said out loud, orally, orally, heard. So, let's break it on down. The reason why this is important, the reason why this might be useful, I believe, is not so much that you need to memorize this alphabet, not so much that you need to understand a whole new alphabet, the IPA, just to get English. No, no, no. It's so that when you are practicing, mastering your American English accent, you're able to more clearly distinguish and differentiate the different sounds that can be made, that they're not just a matter of personal subjective taste, that they are actually the official, as official as anything in language can be, way that you should pronounce a given word. Now, granted, many words have more than one way that is considered okay to pronounce them, but there's certainly even more wrong ways to pronounce a given word. It's pronounced cat, not makoshnamoshiga. That second thing didn't even make any sense. So it's not just personal taste. You gotta get it a little right. And this helps us get it more than a little right. So this symbol here, I actually don't even know the name for these symbols, um, but I can tell you the sound they make because it's demonstrated here. You don't even need to know the name of these symbols. You just need to understand that these are different official sounds that are not just two variants of the same sound. Not really. All right, here we go. E. C. E. C. Me. C. T. Uh, agree. With each of these sounds, practice on your own, making the mouth shapes. Imitate me. Imitate in movies and shows. Watch how it is pronounced. If you have a regional American accent or a different English accent from another country, or you're learning English as a second or third language or what have you, and you're interested in having the perfect American accent, imitating and copying is your first step. Then your second step is understanding what you do when you imitate and copy. So here's the next one we're looking at. E. Sit. Often also portrayed with an I, but it is a different sound. Thin, thick, mick. Hey, what's up, Mick? Trick. Um, I'm just rhyming with the K at the end, but uh, hill, pill, rim, uh, film, uh, biv. That's not a word. Give. That is a word. So you get the idea. Uh. Good. Good. Uh. Uh. That short, little, simple U-ish or O-ish sound. Uh. Not to be confused with this next one. Ooh. Ooh. That two. tighter, smaller, ooh. 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 Two. Food. 
not good. We talk about it a lot between the difference between the vowel sound in good and food. Good food. They both have two O's, but they're different sounds. You want to get those right. And again, this whole section here, this big third, this chunker, however much it is, is the simple basic vowel sounds. Eh. Eh. Egg. Egg. The most quintessential of E sounds, in my opinion. Egg. Beg. Um, leg. Mel. Mel. Shell. Um, polemic. I'm just using simple one-syllable words mostly, but of course any of these could be part of a longer, more complicated word. Um, uh, I said polemic. Uh, uh, wreck. That eh sound. It's an E sound, but it's not the only E sound. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Away. 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 That simple ah. Uh, ah. Uh. It's, I think this one is more meant to be like uh. But I think it's a little closer to ah uh, without being that tall. I think it's in between. But I can't tell the difference between uh and ah uh, that much. There's a little difference. Er. Uh, er. Uh, her. Her. Per. That's where the U are. Uh, fleur. Uh, sure. Sometimes sure. Uh, per, uh, said per. Allure. That er sound. Trevor. Sometimes with an O-R. Sometimes with an E-R. Sometimes something else entirely. Like a U-R or what have you. But that's very much an American sound. Meaning you won't find this sound in many other languages there's there's a lot of ling uh, like the british accent generally has less of this sound er with that er with the r's the tongue touching the teeth in the back practice it you're like a pirate er er like a dog but cooler oh oh court 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 this one I can't help but say this sounds kind of British because this is meant to be distinguished from oh oh no no and so this one here oh oh caught caught it must appear in some words I can't think of that many examples in general when you're tempted to make this sound usually I believe you actually if you want to sound more American in most cases not all want to make this sound over here. Oh. Oh. No. Just keep that in mind, but it's all word dependent and there are exceptions to everything. Ah. Ah. Cat. Cat. Bat. Rat. Mac. Track. A lack. A flack. A flack. This is such a huge one. This is often with an A. In fact, when people show an A, they will give us an example something like cat or bat. But A can do so many things besides cat and bat, and often this sound will be spelled out with something other than an A. Here we see it looking like an A-E, but of course this is not meant to be a perfect analogy to English. This is that international phonetic alphabet. Similarities between this and English lettering are hit or miss. You can't rely on them, so don't worry too much about what this looks like over here. Just notice that the letter A makes many different sounds, and A, ah, as in bat, is one of them, and that other letter combinations sometimes make A ah as well, but it's an important sound in American English. Uh. Uh. Cut. Cut. This is the one that I have trouble distinguishing, like I said, from away. Uh. Uh. Away. Away. Cut. Uh. Uh. Cut. I think this is more of an uh sound, slightly less tall. But you'll hear this all the time. But, strut, um, rum, tum, pum, uh, suts, cut, ruts, uh. It's often a U, sometimes it's an A. But it is an important American English sound. Learn it. It's good if you don't know what to say either. People go, uh, it's a filler word. You're not actually supposed to do that. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, father. Father. This is another quintessentially A sound that sometimes is with an O, sometimes is with another letter making this sound, but often this is the other sound 
that is very much considered, in many cases, owned by a father. That tall, open mouth sound. Father. Uh, father. There it is with an O. Robot. An O again, but often with an A again. This is an important sound. Learn this sound. These are the basic uh, I guess they're called monothongs, just one sound vowels. Over here on the right, we have the diphthongs. That's two different vowel sounds smushed together that are important for American English. There's other sounds out there in other languages, but these are the ones in American English that you'll hear where it is a diphthong vowel. It's still a vowel, still considered one syllable, but it's kind of more than one vowel pushed together. Here's the first one. A. A. Eight. Sometimes spelled with an E-I, sometimes an A, sometimes something else. But it is A. Say. Eight. Mate. Great. Uh, flay. Bay. It's a great sound. Oi. Oi. Boy. Spelled in all sorts of different ways as well. O-I, O-Y, other sounds. Oi, oi. Boy, ahoy! An important diphthong in American English. Learn this and practice it. Remember, in American English, those Y sounds and those R sounds are very emphatic. They're not subtle. Boy, yeah, 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 yeah. It's big. It's a big sound. Bar, 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 bar. It's a big sound. It's not bar. Or it's not a rolling R. Like bar. You don't do that. Not in American English. Gosh darn it, sorry to cuss. And you know what, remember, if you ever get any of this wrong, who cares, it's just talking. But this is for fun. We're having fun because it's fun to become a master at this, and that's what you're becoming, a master. All right, so... Boy. 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 Yeah. Practice that O-Y sound, or O-I, as it shows it here. O. O. No. I love talking about this no. My first word was no in O. This is that quintessential O sound. I. I. My. My. Hi. Thigh. Apply. Try. Sometimes with just a Y, sometimes an A-I, sometimes an A-I-G-H or an E-I-G-H. There's lots of different ways this sound I can happen. But here is a pro tip. Here's a professional expert tip for you. Don't mix up this sound. I. I. My. With this sound. A. A. Eight. Eight. It's the difference between my and may. It's the difference between apply, which is a thing, and a play, which is two words or it's not a thing if it's one word. This is important for your American English accent. Apply. A play. Try. Tray. That is a huge difference. Learn that difference. Practice it. Ow. Ow. Now. Now. Kind of starts with an ow and squeezes together like a ooh sound. Almost like it's a ooh or an O at the end. So it's a diphthong here. Ow, now. How now, brown cow? Well, let's just say we should have a little powwow if you don't want to have a cow. You know what I mean. All right, those are the main vowels, both monothongs and diphthongs that we care about. Let's quickly look at the consonants. I think these are often easier. Sometimes they're not. Here we go. Huh. Pen. Pen. Putz. Polemic. Why do I like that word? Pictionary. Passion. Police. P -p 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 it's bilabial. You're using both lips. P and it's a stop noise. You hold in the air. P then you let it pop out. Pop, 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 pop. Pop is a great one to practice with this because it starts with a P, ends with a P. And it has that stop noise. A little burst of air. B is also a stop noise. B. 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 
Bob. Here's another pro tip that might help you. Practice the difference between pop and bob. Pop versus bob. Bob, let me turn off my silly sound here. Interrupting us, pop versus bob. What? I just got a call from the Academy of Perfect American English, and they said I should keep teaching you. All right, good. I silenced it. Thank you, American Academy of Perfect American English. I told them you guys were beautiful. Pop, pop, bob. They both pop at the end. They both pop at the beginning. They both bob either way. They're both bilabial, meaning it's the lips coming together. B, p. That's what makes these tricky. They sound like they should be similar. And depending on your native language, you might make one sound when you want to make the other. So the biggest pro tip for these two is just to notice the difference and practice one after the other so you get the distinguishing uh, factor correct, that you're able to distinguish them. Pop versus bob, the consonant there. Consonants are these non-vowels. I don't know how to define them. T ten. T Oops. Ten. 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 Let's close this down. T ten. Ten. T. T t t t t t t t t t t. Not by label. Involves teeth and tongue behind the teeth. Ten. T. T t t t. Talk to me in your tremulous, terrifyingly good American English. Tim. Tom. This one, you want to not say th or try. You, there's other letters that could be confused as it. You don't want to say those. D. D. Do. Do. Just as P and B can sound very similar and hard to distinguish, T and D can sound very similar and hard to distinguish. But try. To do is a great one to practice. This is on my to-do list. I've been meaning to do that. To, do, to and do rhyme. One starts with T, one starts with D. They both end in O. But it's the difference between saying to do and to to, which is not the same thing. Or do do, which is also quite not the same thing to, unless it's on your to do list, is to do do. These are jokes. I add them in because I'm trying to be more watchable. To do, to do. Practice to versus do. Da, da, da. Ta, 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 ta. Unless you can see inside my mouth, which I promise you is even grosser than I am normally. The only way to really master it is to practice it. But you can start by articulating it, imitating people doing it. Ta, da. Ta, da. Ta, da. It's a subtle difference in tongue placement. That's what she said on to the next consonant. Ch, 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 care. Wait, what? Ch, care. Ch, 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 ch. Chair. Church. Practice church. Church starts with cha and ends with cha. It's a great one. Church. Now, just as P and B sounds can be easy to confuse with each other, and just as T and D sounds can be easy to confuse with each other. Ch. Ch. Chair. Is easy to confuse with. J. Where's the other one? Z. Nope. Z. Nope. Z. 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 Where is it? There it is. Yeah, she. I don't know why it looks like that, but who cares? Ch. Ch. Chair. Is different from. Sh. Sh. She. Ch, ch. One thing you'll notice is that it's hard to hold ch, but sh, sh, you can hold more easily, meaning if I hold it, you can continue to do it more easily. So, sure and church, they're different sounds. 
So just as P and B are different sounds, and just as T and D, you want to practice the difference. Practice the difference between church or ch- check care and sure. Sh- she. She. They're different sounds, but they both involve. Let's see. Sh. Sh. Ch. 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 Sh. Feel it on your throat. Feel it on your larynx, your Adam's apple, if you have one. Ch. Ch. There's more vibration here with ch. You're stopping the sounds more. Ch. Ch. Whereas with sh. Sh. You're not stopping it. You're just squeezing the air out so that it goes through a more narrow, a smaller hole. That's a big difference. That's not the official way of describing it. There are official ways of describing everything. You know, fricative, you know, non-fricative, uh, bilabial. We don't need to learn all of that. You can if you want, and that's great. We just want to learn how to make these American sounds. J- ja. Just. Just. This one is fun. I like this one a lot. J. Ja. J. Ja. Sometimes it's made by a G. Sometimes it's made by a J. And I think other ones can make it too sometimes if I'm remembering my brain knowledge correctly. That's not a sentence. Just. Jennifer. Jeez. Jealous. Jealous of your jelly and your jam. Wow. Hey, thanks, Aunt Jemaya. I want some jelly and jam for my jolly good... Uh, Food starts with J, that G sound, J sound, J, G, J, 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 J. It's made in a similar mouth and throat composition as CH, but the tongue and teeth placement are different. Practice the difference there. K. K. Can. K. K. Can. Cat. Can. Car. So, this one is tricky depending on where you come from because it's not all the way back in the throat it's not like ha, ha. it's not the hairball sound which i'm not disrespecting that hairball sound i know it sounds like i am because i'm saying hairball sound lots of languages and accents have the hairball sound ha, 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 like a clean on i sound really offensive right now i'm sorry those languages are awesome they get total respect Bless you, we love you. But we don't have that in American English. Not really, not usually. We have k, k. It's more towards the middle of the mouth. Maybe a little towards the back of the mouth, but it's not in the throat. It's not in the throat. It's k, k. Feel the back of your tongue up against the top of your mouth. K. And then let the air kind of pop out, like pop, but pop is with the lips. K is in the back of the mouth, not the throat. So it's not k or k. And it doesn't roll. It's not r. It's not any of that. It's k, k, k. See how I don't have to put the teeth or lips together? K, 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 k. It's made in the back of the mouth. I know it's gross. Language, just like love and war, is kind of gross. So... Get used to it. I don't make the rules. I just tell them G- to you. Go. 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 Now, this one's fun because this one's also made in the back of the mouth and is a stop noise. Like, pops out. Like, ka, as in cat. But, go. Go. Versus, ka. Go. 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 This is another difference where you can feel it in the throat, the difference. K, k, cat. The word may involve vibrating the throat. Like cat. But the, um, it's not voiced. You don't have to vibrate the throat, the larynx, for this K sound itself, the C sound. You don't have to vibrate the throat. K. It only starts vibrating once you get to the next letter or the vowel. For me, at least. Whereas, g, g, you have to vibrate from the beginning. Even though the mouth position 
is very, very similar. It does the same thing where it's in the back of the mouth. Nga, nga, versus ka, ka, ka. You're able to do it with the mouth open, but the ga, ga, you vibrate here right from the get-go. I forget what the name is when you vibrate. Uh, voiced, I think. Five. 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 This one is a front close-up noise. I like it because it's easy to see. Top teeth over bottom lip, just like you found someone so beautiful and you don't know how to show it in a non-creepy way. Why'd I do that? Anyway, for any of these, if you need to stop, rewind, practice, play again until you get it, there's no shame, in fact. And that, in fact, takes total pride in that. It means you're awesome. You are awesome. All right. Friend. Five. Friends of old, strangers from distant lands. Five. Friendly. Forget. I won't forget. Because that frog told me he wants to give me a high five. Boom. That's F. Well done. Mm. V. Very. V. 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 All right. Just as K and G have similar mouth and tongue positions, but one you vibrate and one you don't. Uh, what is this going on here? Sorry. Computer issues. Uh, so once, forget that, well, just as K and G have similar mouth and tongue positions, but it depends on whether you vibrate or not. F versus V, same thing. This is kind of fun. Check this out. Look how dumb I look. That's okay. There's no vibrating happening here. None. But... Do the same lip, tongue, teeth positions. But then let the throat vibrate. It becomes voiced. For F. For V. So, that is... The major difference happens in the throat between these two. Again, just like several other... Pairs. Thing. Thing. Th. Thing. This one I find to be tricky for a lot of people. Thing versus ding. Thing versus ding. With thing, the tongue comes a little bit more forward. And it's not lip on tongue. Or lip on tongue. What am I saying? It's not lip on teeth, like F. It is tongue on teeth. Thing. Thing. And just like F, it's unvoiced, meaning you won't feel the vibrating so much here. Thing. Thick. Uh, depending on your native language, you might be tempted to put the tongue too far back and make it ding or ting. But don't do that. The tongue is on the teeth. Mm. This. This. This one is interesting because just like thick, this one often is spelled with a TH. In fact, if you see a TH at the beginning of a word, it is often nearly impossible to tell whether it will be thick or thin uh, or um, the, the. It could be. It, it could have turned out that we all said th, th, but notice the difference between the, which is the word, sometimes the, depending on if a vowel sound or consonant comes next. But let's just say the versus th. We already did th before, but this is not th. This is th, th, and again, it's about. The vibrating throat again vibrates the throat, but doesn't. Uh, it's a, so by analogy, by comparison, just as F is no vibration in the throat and V is does vibrate the throat. Same comparison, just different mouth position with thick th versus 
the, the, the. So notice that. So some the the point there is some sounds are made and they have a similar mouth and tongue position or the same, but it's about whether you vibrate the throat or not. And others, it's just about the mouth position. It's not so much about vibrating the throat. So mm. this. This. That is that one. S- S- so. So, this is the quintessential S noise, that snake noise. I think for most people, this one is pretty easy. Just imagine a snake swimming at you and going, S- Well, hello there, Harry Potter. S- I noticed you speak parcel tongue. Good job. I love you. All right. That's an S sound. Z. 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 Again, here's another fun difference where it's a pair of consonant sounds where the mouth and tongue does the same basic thing, but it's whether you vibrate the throat. So check out s as in snake and z as in zoo. Think of a z as just a vibrating snake. It's, it's, it's all just leaking out the front, but with zzz, as in zoo, it's zzz, vibrating in the throat here. Beautiful, guys. You're all beautiful. I use guys in a gender-neutral way. Men, women, everything gender-neutral. If you're learning American English or an American accent or you're interested at all, we love you. In fact, we love you even if you're not interested. She. 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 Very similar to S, but she or sh, sh. The main difference is you're biting more of the sides of the tongue. There's more side tongue action. Practice that difference. But it's also unvoiced, meaning there's not throat vibration. Vision. Vision. This one is fun, and this one doesn't always come up, but sometimes it does. But sometimes it's spelled with S-I-O-N or I-S-I-O-N or just... uh, Sometimes it's spelled with the S combination, even though that can be surprising. Sometimes it's spelled with like a a G, as in like in beige, beige. I think it's E-I-G-E, B-E-E-I-G-E. Sometimes it's spelled with uh, a J, uh, J, J, Jacques, for example, the name. Uh, you can see it in a lot of ways, but it's a very beautiful sound. It perhaps appears less in American accents, uh, in American English, than it does in some language. I think Persian, Farsi, has a lot of J, J, this sound. It's a beautiful sound, but we do use it. It's important to master this sound and know the difference between this sound and other similar sounding ones. Mm. Mm. Me. I won't go into too much detail on this. I feel like this is simple. Mm. Mother. Master of English language. You are a master. Ma, 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 ma. Both teeth together, voice, ma. I can kind of pop out in that way. Meticulous. That is how you will succeed, by being meticulous. Mm. Mm. Nine. Nine. A lot of similar things with the throat and mouth happen, except n. The production of the sound is shaped farther behind the lips. M is in the lips. N. N. You see, it's the tongue on the top of the mouth. Mm. Long. Long. This one, long is the tongue in the back of the mouth, uh, the tongue touching the top of the mouth, but farther back, enough that it almost kind of activates your nasal cavity. It's almost a nasal noise. Long, nga. In American English, it doesn't tend to start words as often. Usually it's in the middle of a word or at the end, like singing. Singing has it twice. Try singing. Singing. Sing, ing, that's one word though. Singing a song. 
สองอ่ะ House Ah the creepy bad breath sound house but so important in American English How are you Ha Ha It's the breathing the heavy breathing sound with a, with an open mouth It sounds like a, it's unvoiced though because you're just letting out air and you're forcing it a little bit so that it makes a sound but even though you're forcing it out of the mouth you're not vibrating the larynx that was creepy just now what I did la la love love this is our classic L sound especially when L well anytime L love L feeling This can be tricky for a lot of folks, including people from uh, Russia or anywhere in Eastern Europe, because often those L's that they use will be farther back, as in "ilo." That's a Russian accent. It's a bad Russian accent on my part, but "ilo," which goes back and widens the back of the throat, uh, back of the mouth more, and is more backwards. But with our L, our L. You want to have that l, 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 l. The tongue flaps down, and the sound happens more toward the front. You still voice it l, l. Listen to the sound of love, but you're not articulating all the way back here or widening the back of your mouth. You don't need to. R, r, right, right. Classic R sound, and this is the R sound that can work great at the beginning of a word, as well. Right, ah, uh, how rip roaring the fun is to write in perfect American English. The righteousness—that's that a weird word, but ra ra. This one is so tricky. This might be the trickiest one for many people,、uh, depending on your native language. Really, you're doing a great job. Really, really, ra, ra, ra. It starts with the ra sound. The r sound involves squeezing of the tongue with the teeth in the back, but you still have some opening towards the front of the mouth. Practice that. Wa, wa, we, wa, we, wa. This is an interesting one because. Like the sound of Y, like yellow, yeah. This is a consonant that is hard to hold. Meaning, if you just held it, it would turn into a vowel, basically, rather than stay a consonant. But wa, wa, wa. I actually need some help with this. I know how to say it correctly. I can describe it a little bit, but it's hard for me to define. How to make the sound? How to describe it? I know I don't know what I'm doing. I can't feel it. So, even I'm not perfect at American English, but I can say it correctly. Wow, World of Warcraft is a fun game, but a little too addicting. Why do you think my cat is so cute? Well, let's just say all cats are cute, especially mine. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Here's that Y sound. Lovely Y sound. Yes. Tongue squeezing sides of teeth.、Uh, sides of tongue squeezing teeth a little bit more. More tongue touching the top of the mouth in the middle. Yes. I love yellow, even though it's not very popular. Ah,、uh, when I was young, I wasn't popular even back then. Ah, yes. American English. Thank you so much.、Uh, subscribe, like, share, if you're into this. If you think other people might be into it, or if you just want to make fun of me, which is probably a good idea. I'm so thrilled that you stuck with me all this time. If you made it to the very end, leave a comment down in the bottom. Maybe say something like, "American English is for silly alligators." <laughs> I'll know what you mean. Until next time. Thank you so much. I'm Michael Eldridge, your tutor. For perfect American English.
as we continue down this dark and beautiful, mysterious journey together. I'll see you next time.